Hi, I'm Christy Clarkson, Marketing Specialist at Power Factors. Today I'm talking with Robert Johnson. Robert has been with Power Factors since 2016 and is one of our senior market advisors working closely with product, technology, and sales teams to help guide our development and execution strategies. Hi, Robert. Glad you could join us again. Hey, Christy. It's a pleasure to be back. Last time we talked, we went over some of the challenges of operating best assets, and you mentioned how software plays an important role. Let's take a minute to dive a little deeper on this topic. What are some of the software applications and systems available to owners and operators of best and wind and solar assets? So the software one uses will depend on the specific context, but you know, generally speaking, for BESS, software covers a wide set of overlapping concerns that include things like controls, system performance, safety, health, warranty, and markets. So the first is BESS control systems, and these are responsible for orchestrating various aspects of system operations. And really the workhorse of the control system is the power plant controller, or PPC for short which is a critical component that handles the charge and discharge set points, distributing those to the inverters and other components, and other important dynamic control functions like frequency and voltage regulation. Next, we have the energy management system, or EMS for short. And this is really a layer of uh, controls and intelligence on top of the PPC. It provides the PPC with dispatch commands and then takes into consideration the operating constraints of the batteries to really ensure that its safety and health are respected. Then you also need to develop those dispatch commands and the schedules in which they are dispatched. And that happens through a process called optimization. And this takes into consideration the forecasts of pricing and production, and then develops that dispatch schedule and distributes them to the EMS. Then you have asset performance management, which is really one of our flagship products. And this software allows asset managers, performance engineers, site operators, and others to really coordinate on the day-to-day -day responsibilities of running assets. And that's across a broad range of activities. This includes things like reviewing dashboards and KPIs to understand status and health, conducting ad hoc analysis you know, across multiple data sets to help you pinpoint failure modes, and to generate your daily, monthly, and annual reports so that owners and off-takers can have visibility. Another really important set of software capabilities revolve around the calculation of advanced analytics for BESS. These include things like early fault detection and predictive alerting for you know, thermal issues, cell imbalance and degradation, KPIs including cycle count, round-trip efficiency, state of charge, estimations, and diagnostics. Another software that's really important for BESS operations, but isn't necessarily unique or exclusive to BESS, is field service management. This is sometimes referred to as CMMS or computerized maintenance management systems. And these applications enable corrective and preventive maintenance workflows that involve you know, dispatching technicians to sites, creating work orders, managing spare parts inventories, and a lot more. And because, as I mentioned earlier, the majority of system revenues are realized on just a handful of days in most cases, this means you really need to have a solid maintenance strategy and software tooling to do that. What considerations should BESS owners and operators keep in mind when looking to procure and utilize these types of software systems? Yeah, it's a really great question. You know, at Power Factors, we've taken into consideration several important principles when architecting our platform. And these principles apply broadly to solar and wind, but are especially important given the nature of best assets. And these principles involve scalability, extensibility, robustness, flexibility, and portfolio-wide visibility, just to name a few. So first, with scalability, your system should be architected in a way that allows it to manage you know, the volume, velocity, and variability of data, the three Vs, and all of the processing that happens with it. And that means considering how you do this from the edge where you're collecting and processing data locally on site to how you pull that data into the cloud and process it. And then how you store, exchange, and integrate that data with external systems. Extensibility in this context refers to the ability to add new capabilities easily over time without breaking things. For that, we've implemented event-driven and microservices-oriented architecture that allows our development teams to create new features and extend parts of the system in relative independence and with minimal impact on others. So in addition to scalable and extensible, your solution should also be robust, which is the idea that it'll continue to operate even in the face of bad incoming data or user input errors. Our cleansing algorithms are one part of this. Another is the careful management of communication loss. 
whether that's with devices outside or with you know external third party APIs. Flexibility now is important because you know one size doesn't fit all. Our customers will invariably need to create their own calculations and arrange those calculations and KPIs into dashboards. And they want to do that in a flexible way. And to do that is actually hard if you're also trying to respect scalability, robustness, and extensibility. You really have to embed the right kind of guardrails into the system to not break. And the last thing I'll highlight is the idea of portfolio-wide visibility, which is the ability of a solution to provide a harmonized view of all your assets in one place. Most of our customers operate a mix of storage, solar, and wind, and if your solutions don't accommodate all of them simultaneously, you'll be stuck with redundant and overlapping systems, which becomes unmanageable as you scale up. And the solution should also be OEM agnostic, since you're most likely going to have a diverse set of equipment suppliers. So these are some of the most important considerations from my perspective when evaluating your best solutions. Thanks so much for sharing these insights with us, Robert. It's been great talking with you about the momentum battery energy storage is gaining in the market and how owners, operators, and asset managers can navigate the challenges and opportunities that come with it. Yeah, thanks, Christy. That was fun. I look forward to the next uh, discussion.